Welcome to episode one of my Shadow Dark actual play series. So in the episode before this one, that's episode zero, we actually did character creation. We created four characters. We have Godfrey, which is a human fighter. We have Torsen, the dwarf cleric, Reinar, the elf wizard, and Norbert, the halfling thief. During this solo actual play series, our core rules is going to be Shadow Dark RPG by Kelsey Dion of the Arcane Library. This is a stripped down version of 5e that is very deadly. The other supplement we will be using throughout this series is Nave 2nd Edition for the random tables. The other resource we are going to be using is the Book of Random Tables by Matt Davids. And I have all five of them with the quest books. That is going to be pretty much every table that we could potentially need. The last resource, Old School Essentials by Necrotic Gnome. And with that, let's get into the story. A skyship sliced through the ethereal clouds, its trajectory set for the frigid realm of Valrum in the distant north. On board, a diverse crew toiled diligently, bound for a settlement nestled in the icy tundra. Yet fate, capricious as ever, had other designs in store. In the midst of their journey, a sudden tempest descended, ripping the ship asunder. Caught in the maelstrom's grasp, crewmates found themselves cast adrift, clinging desperately to debris amidst the howling winds. With the vessel shattered, they were flung into the unforgiving cliffs of Valrum. Sometime later, a crewmate by the name of Thorson, a rugged dwarf, stirring awake to the glinting moon, peering over the rocky, snow-laden crag. In his hand, he clutched a talisman of his patron deity, Radius, for he was a cleric of the sun god. Torsen shook off the scraps of timber and rope, sitting up, still dazed by the tumultuous events of the storm. As he regained his senses, he heard someone calling his name. Torsen, come help me get this timber off me. There, pinned between a large, boulder and sizable portion of the ship's hull, lay a crewmate, Reinar. Though they were not particularly close, they had always maintained a respectable working relationship. Torsen hurried over and with a grunt, put his shoulder under the timber, his boots digging into the soil as he heaved, the beam up and over, freeing the elf's leg. By then, dusk was setting in and the two decided to make a fire in search of others come morning. Not long after, two other figures approached, a human and a halfling, their faces turning icy blue from the cold of the region. They stumbled in as quickly as their frozen bones would allow, seating themselves by the fire's warmth without hesitation. Reinar, cautious and vigilant, did not recognize them from the ship. Neither of your faces are familiar to me. How did you come here to be this late in the day? He inquired suspiciously. My apologies for intruding upon your camp, the halfling replied. My name is Norbert, and this is Godfrey. We were making our way over the mountain when that maelstrom struck. The wind claimed all of our provisions. The only reason we survived was because we found part of the ship's hull to take shelter under, but the cold drove us from there, and that's when we spotted the smoke from your fire. Reinar remained wary, but lacking evidence or reason to dispute Norbert's story, he relented. Moments later, a grunt and a snort echoed through the rocky formations of the mountain, followed immediately by a hungry, angry roar. Godfrey spoke up, his voice tinged with anxiety. It seems that the storm has awoken the mountain, and it does not sound too pleased about it. And so our story starts with a question. What exactly are they going to be facing? And for that, we're going to the Book of Random Tables 1, and we're going to roll on Mountain Encounters. D-100 roll. We know it's something that grunts and snorts and roars. So we have that, that to work with. A 94. 94 is wolves. And we have a party of four. Let's take a look for wolves in here. Two wolves over here. We have our party of heroes. First, let's make a reaction roll. Since the characters are not really interacting with these guys, we're seeing what what their response is. Reaction roll is going to be 2d6, nine is neutral. We have the opportunity to do something. In the wreckage, there was some provisions and stuff. And basically what that boils down to is a crawling kit for each character. We're gonna take some of those provisions, we're gonna to toss them to the wolves, 
See if that is enough to satisfy their curiosity. Norbert has our highest intelligence, so Norbert is going to be the one that's making this roll. Let's see what we're rolling against. This is going to determine our difficulty class. A d6 plus 10. So we're rolling against a 13. Norbert gets a plus 1. 16. Norbert throws a bundle of provisions over to the wolves and... They sniff at them. Are they satisfied enough to take the provisions and leave? I think it's going to be a 50-50 chance. So we're going to roll one dice. It's a one. No. So they lay down right there and they start eating the provisions. We're going to roll a d4. We have one turn to react or the wolves are, uh, are done with provisions and ready to do something else. Do we take the opportunity and attack them? I kind of think so. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Reinar is going to step forward. He's going to take the the one turn. He's going to use Burning Hands, which is going to be a tier level one. So it's going to be a difficulty class of 11. The goal isn't really to kill, it's to frighten off. Reinar gets a plus one because he's an elf and a plus one from a spell casting. And so he actually has a plus four. Eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, that is one above. Reinar successfully casts Burning Hands. He shoots a geyser of fire from his fingertips towards the wolves, and they each take 1d6 fire damage. One of them takes six, the other one takes four. Now it's the wolves' turn. We're gonna make a morale check to see if that frightened the wolves enough to move on or not. All right, that's a critical failure. The wolves tuck tail and run from the fire in the opposite direction. Now that we've taken care of the wolves, we have another situation. We're stuck on top of a mountain in the freezing cold. We are in the realm of Valrim. This is our mountain, and our airship came down right here. And so we have to figure out which way we're going to go. Let's ask a question. I think it's likely that we've seen some kind of settlement from the sky. We're going to say that's very likely. We're actually gonna roll three six-sided dice, take the highest of the result, and see if we get a yes or no. I think it's a, that's an absolute yes. We did see a settlement. Um, was it the settlement that the airship was heading to? We're gonna say that's a 50-50, because I we don't know how far off we were from that. Uh, two, no, it's not the settlement that we were bound for on the airship. I am going to roll a, it's an eight-sided dice, that's going to give us a direction southwest. So this direction is where that settlement is. We're walking six miles across. So it's going to take us eight hours to get off the mountain and then another four hours to get to the actual settlement. We need to make six random encounter checks to see what happens on the way down this mountain. A six, no encounters. Two, no encounters. Six, no encounters. Three, no encounters. One more. Six, no encounters. So now we're off the mountain. Two, no encounters. Four, no encounters. Book of Random Tables number two has town names in it. So we are going to roll on that to see what we get. And that is a four, Ringstone. So we make it down to Ringstone. The first thing we're gonna do is find the local tavern or inn. We're actually going to use maze rats to generate this. The local inn is the blessed boot. Our four heroes go into the tavern. The others are going to take a table and Torsten is going to ask if there are any rooms available. And this is a two story, two story building. At the bottom is a, a tap house and upstairs there's a handful of rooms. And so he's going to inquire about getting one question I have is, where was the skyship heading to? And we will go back to the town name generator. We're going to say it was the city of Dornford. And which direction was the ship heading? West. We ask him how far we are from the city of Dornford. We're going to roll a d6, and that's going to be how many hexes we are from the city of Dornford. Uh, one hex in what direction? Northwest. So the city of Dornford is going to be over here. Okay, are there are there any carts or anything 
in uh, in this village where we could rent or pay for some kind of transportation to the city of Dornford. I take the highest yes. So there is a stable here where we can rent some horses from. Okay, and I believe I believe we need a plot twist. Here we go. Rumors. So we're gonna roll D hundred. That is thirty-two. Thirty-two. A famous group of crawlers hasn't returned from a delve. Okay. That that gives us a few questions. Where were they delving, and what were they delving for? Yeah, that's. And we will go ahead and use this adventure site uh, name generator. We're gonna roll a D twenty. Is the Island of the Bleeding Twilight. So now that that question was answered, what were they delving for? Let's make a roll here. Question is, was this a recovery mission or a rescue mission? So recovery mission, they're going in for an object. A rescue mission, they're going in for a person. And I suppose the third option is they could just be clearing the area out. One to two, it's a person. Three to four, is a thing and then five through six is going to be the location itself five through six they were going to clear out the island next question is why if there was a party that went there specifically to clear the island that means that it must have been dangerous for the area which kind of tells me whatever is there and with it being the island of bleeding twilight i'm going to go ahead and take creative license and say it is a island of undead and Possibly, uh, we're actually going to roll on this, though I'm going to say it's likely. Is it vampire related? That is a yes, and that is doubles. So, a random encounter is about to happen. So, they were going to deal with a vampire. More than likely, that vampire has been taking people from the village and possibly the city. Now we're getting somewhere. And we rolled doubles. Let's go ahead and do this. We are going to use the Iron Sworn uh, theme and action oracle to see if we can narrow narrow this down a little bit more. 46, 72, find corruption. So that tells me there is somebody, somebody in this village that works for the vampire and the bartender knows it he leans in and he says be careful what you say around here because the creature of that island has eyes watching and ears listening everywhere and with that our little party comes together we have four individuals stuck in a frozen land and it seems that they are going to be going to a island on a frozen lake to deal with with a vampire. In the next episode, we're going to be going to this island of bleeding twilight. We're going to see if we can find the party that had went to deal with the vampire and see what became of them and potentially take up and finish their quest and uh, see if we can rid this town of this vampire menace once and for all. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.